the legendary literary genius William Shakespeare, who, in one of his epic works, said that there are so many events in the womb of time. Shakespeare's statement is a graphic illustration of the life of the 77-year-old Mena-based Islamic scholar, teacher, author, and apostle of interreligious dialogue and harmony, Sheikh Hamed Lemu. Popularly referred to by his Keith and kin in his home country, Lemu, headquarters of Bako local government area of Niger State, Hamed Lemu was born into a polygamous family in that sleepy agrarian community on 1st December 1929. His father, Abubakar, was a Quranic teacher, while his mother, Amina, was a full-time housewife. Life in that rural community where subsistence farming was the predominant occupation held great attractions for the young Hamid. Very interesting. Although we couldn't know at that time that it was interesting until we see what we are facing in the later years up to today. The life is a life of real rural area. Very innocent, very peaceful, and indeed very healthy. In the sense that the whole idea of locking your even bedroom, not to talk of the whole house, it doesn't even occur to anybody. Whether you are traveling for a long distance, for some days or weeks, it is now to draw the door. That's the, you have closed the room. The thought of somebody coming to steal, break into your room, would not even occur to you. We saw that in the behavior of our parents, both mom and dad, and all the other members in the household. household. Well, I happen to be from what you call Quranic school environment. The interesting thing is in those days, you find even the farm produce is kept on the farm. You just erect a hut, a such hut in the farm. And that was the strong room, so to speak where some people would rather deposit, deposit some of their money and valuables. We call it Nupi Isan. That Isan was known to be the strong room or the store of the owner of the farm. So the guinea corn, the harvest, everything, whether it is yam, guinea corn, maize, or, well, not so much maize in those days. Uh, but whatever it is, it is in that isan, that, uh, that kind of heart, such a heart, that is stored until when required, they fetch some quantity to the house to be thrashed and utilized. Uh, it's known to everybody. The thought somebody will set fire to it, the thought somebody will raid and take your valuables in it, would not even come to their head. Now, that's tells you the extent of security. That continued right up to my, not only primary school years, but even secondary school years. Hamed Lemu started Quranic school at the age of three, as children were expected to take part in the school the moment they learned how to speak. His father was the teacher and the school held in the family's compound. Both my dad, mom and dad, they were great disciplinarian in the sense that they just watch your behavior like hawks to see that you behave well, you apply to others, you respect the elders, you tell the truth. Anything they sense is against Islamic or was against Islamic teachings, they will not tolerate it and will uh, advise you and 
if you are stubborn, then that will lead them to Bulala, the, my father in particular. My mother used to sit me down and say, all right, don't do this, do that, and with, your, with the examples. You see Mr. So-and-so, you see Madam So-and-so, you see Lady So-and-so, all the things that she would like me to avoid, she will point out the people who are doing that, and you know them, you see physically, and all the things that she would like me to do, she will point out. I remember, for instance, one day when we were sent to primary school, in the early days of my primary education, that was in 1939, my mother used to say, look, that is Yabuneya in Arabic, my, my dear son or my dear child. Pay attention to what you are being taught so that you will one day become a very prominent malam like Baba Gbangba. Baba Gbangba was the judge, area court judge, although it was not called the area court in those days, was the Alkali, the area court judge in, in Lemu. So that you become a very learned man like Baba Gbangba. It didn't get out of my ears. And this one of the inspirations on the basis of which I try to seek knowledge with great support vigorously from my father. So that aroused my interest in general education, not only Islamic education up to today. After seven years at the Quranic school, Hamed Lemu entered elementary school in Lemu in 1939 at the age of 10. He spent five years in the school. A former principal, private secretary to the late Sadauna of Sukuto, Alhaji Asan Lemo, was one of his classmates. He is uh, somebody who is uh, industrious, hardworking, uh, and uh, honest, and uh, of course, uh, an Azumin, he, I mean, he's somebody who, who is fairly simple. Hamed Lemu entered the Niger Middle School Bida, now known as Government College Bida in 1944, and obtained the Middle Four Certificate in 1948. Very interesting thing, I finished primary school in 18, initially in 1943, after four years. but. Fortunately for me, after we have, we, I, I had left the school, back to the Quranic school to join my parents, and uh, at the same time, slight farming in the afternoon, probably, and so forth. Suddenly, what you may call inspectors nowadays, but they were called visiting teachers in those days, in the colonial days. One of the visiting teachers came and uh, after a discussion with the headmaster, said, look, there are two boys among those who had left that must be sent back to school. They were very bright, but because the brighter ones had passed the entrance examination to middle school and had gone, it's good to return these. They are still very young and they were bright. So myself, and so my colleague Abu Bakr Lemu, Allah Yerhamu, were returned. So we spent five years because of that extra year. And indeed, when the entrance examination to the middle school, which was the only one in Niger uh, province in those days, uh, we came top and succeeded uh, in going to middle school in 1944. It was tough as well as good because bullying in the compound was terrible so that we used to fear senior students than, than the teachers. But good in the sense that it's later life, in my own life as teacher, uh, that I assess it as very, very good. You, would, you discovered that the teachers loved their job. They were respected by the community. 
teaching materials and learning materials were in abundance. The students love to learn, they love the education, and aspire to be something in life. So the whole idea of student strikes, student uh, misconduct uh, behavior, there was no room for it. You wouldn't dare misbehave in the compound, in the boarding compound. And worst of all, if you dare to do so in the school, you'll be in a greater trouble. So in that respect, character molding, proper, you used to get it. But as I said, bullying in the, in the boarding compound was really severe up to when you will enter class two. That means your third year. That is when you enter the third year in the school, that's when you are free, so to speak, from bullying. And by that time, you had already uh, been disciplined enough to know what to do and what not to do, how to respect your elder students, I mean, older students, senior students, and how to handle your own uh, uh, classmates and your junior students. So, in that respect, it was good. In 1949, he was at the Sharia Law School, now called School of Arabic Studies, Kano, where he obtained the Middle Six Certificate in Arabic, Islamic Studies, and General Education in 1950, as well as the Higher Elementary Teacher Certificate in Arabic, Islamic Studies, Sharia, and General Education in 1952. Well, my father objected to my taking up appointment. In those days, after middle school, you either get an appointment or fend for yourself. But my father was opposed to my taking up appointment under anybody, neither, neither under what they used to call native authority, NA, in those days, nor under government. He protested and said to me, look, here you are still young. Even if you earn money now, you don't know what to do with it. So you are likely to be spoiled. And I don't want you to take any appointment. But whatever you thing you could do to have more knowledge, that I would approve. Then opportunity came for me to go to former Sharia Law School in Kano, now called School for Arabic Studies. So I got admission into the Sharia Law School, which is now School for Arabic Studies, uh, 15th March, 1949, and spent four years there, and uh, graduated in uh, December 1952. We were lucky in the sense that our teachers were Arabs from Sudan and selected highly, terribly learned Nigerians, uh, mixed those two, uh, Arabs from Sudan and highly learned Nigerians. And as far as they are concerned, what I observed from my teachers in the middle school, these teachers have uh, had a combination of many things. They were authority in their respective subject areas to start with like the Arabs from Sudan, were seasoned, highly experienced, learned judges of Sharia before the British brought them to come to develop and uh, improve Sharia education in northern Nigeria. In 1954, Al-Haj Hamed Lemu entered the School of Oriental and African Studies, University of London, and obtained a diploma in Arabic, Islamic studies, and Sharia in 1955. He also obtained the University of London General Certificate of Education, Advanced Level in History, Arabic, Hausa, and Persian in 1961. Al Haji Ahmed went back to the university in October of that year and was awarded a Bachelor of Arts degree in History in 1964. I went back to my teaching in Bida Secondary School 
and these others went to various vocations up to when Alhamdulillah, I spent the rest of my time in education up to 1960 when uh, I went back to change my line of specialization. Instead of Arabic, 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 Islamic studies, Islamic studies, Sharia, whatnot, I decided to say that, look, I don't want to be one-sided. I prefer to be to a broad knowledge. I will now go for secular subjects. That's what actually took me back to the same university in 1860. And I decided to do a degree in history uh, in the same University of London. And that's how it went. Sheikh Hamed Lemu started his career as a teacher of Arabic, Islamic studies, and English at Government Secondary School, Bidda, in 1953, and was in that institution until January 1960. He taught the likes of former Nigerian heads of state, Generals Ibrahim Babangida and Abdul Salam Abubakar, as well as the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Idris Legu Kutigi, Ambassadors James Kolo and Abdul Rahman Gara. They described him as a humble, intelligent, and religious person. All say that it's true. I was one of his. Uh numerous students. Uh, I first came into contact with Sheikh. Um, we're not talking about a period of about 50 years when we were growing up as children in secondary school. And quite frankly, is something that every one of his students, we are all proud of being his students over that period. Uh, one of the most remarkable things about him at that time, even though we were growing up as children and he was a teacher, but we saw him always as a role model. He impresses us as a very young, dynamic man uh, who is trying to bring up other younger children. So it's, for me, it's one of the greatest things that uh, happened to me in development is coming into contact with uh, Sheikh Lemu and being his student too. Sheikh is a, is a great man, disciplined and very religious. Although he's my teacher, I'm, I'm not supposed to, to comment about him. He is to comment about me as a, as a pupil. But even then as a pupil, then we observe that is a uh, very strict disciplinary indeed and very religious. In I saw a large Sheikh Lemu as uh, when I was a student as a role model because of the way he was teaching us his subjects, his appearance and the way and manner, he was handling us as students, generally. The first right somebody is straightforward. When you ask him something he cannot do, you tell him he will not do it. He cannot do it. Straight. You will not waste time. Sheikh Hamed Lemu was promoted to the position of education officer and transferred to the School of Arabic Studies, Kano, to teach Arabic, Islamic studies, and education in February 1960. In 1965, he became the principal of the school. He was, however, transferred to the sixth form of government secondary school, Elori, as vice principal and history teacher between 1965 and 1966. He moved from Elori to Sokoto, where he was appointed the principal of Arabic Teachers College, now named Sheikh Gomi College, between May 1966 and May 1968. From April 1968 to 1970, Sheikh Lemu was promoted Senior Area Inspector of Education in the then Northwestern State Ministry of Education in Sokoto. He rose to the post of Chief Education Officer in 1970, Professional Head of Inspectorate Division of Education, and later 
Director of Planning and Development of Education in 1975. Sheikh Lemu recalled his 30 years as a teacher and educational administrator. I will tell you, it's very interesting. In the sense, throughout my life as a teacher, I will call myself, you know, a kind of liberal person. Liberal in the sense, uh, I can go into even the market in my captain. I don't, I don't, I don't feel anything. Uh, uh, I, in fact, I use not to wear the bandiga a lot. I prefer to go as normal, uh, no, as a teacher, liberal, no thinking everybody, and you know the idea of educated people uh, uh, feeling liberal to talk liberally, free to, in, the, in their speech, free in their behavior, provided they behave well. That was my attitude. And uh, in the former Northwest, where I spent uh, a good number of years in the administration of education, really I found because of our governor, that is Alhaji Osman Farouk, he's one of the best people, I will say, uh, in Nigeria because in terms of administration, he was firm, he knows his goal and knows how to achieve it without stepping over anybody's toes and making his position clear. So consequently, we, we, res we respected him, respected his commissioners, and the commissioners had to work in that manner uh, and behave in that manner. The idea of chop, 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 bribe, uh, fraud, and all this, it, it, it will not come to people's head in that way. Uh, not so much, uh, to the best of my knowledge. In fact, uh, from, it's from there that I came to know very closely people like Shou Shagari, uh, who very, for some time was our commissioner for education. Got to know him as probably one of the best Nigerians, not only the best Northwesterners, but the best Nigerians whom I adore, I respect greatly because I worked closely with him and knew that he, is, he was a person of integrity. That was my experience. And that we were motivated because of the atmosphere, atmosphere of the government. The whole idea of doing evil, uh, misbehavior, misconduct, bribery, corruption, it will not come to you without feeling some guilt. And the people doing it cannot help feeling guilty when they see the majority around them are good people. This is my experience. One of his close associates in the defunct Northwestern State and former Vice Chancellor Usman Danford University, Sokoto, Professor Madi Adamo, spoke of his experience working with Sheikh Hamed Lemu. So came to know that um, Sheikh Lemu um, is a very humble person. Um, he is highly educated, very well experienced, and highly regarded in Nigeria and abroad. And yet when he met people, he, he greeted them with full respect, as if they are his seniors. But then people say, ah, um, no, um, where are the people to greet you in that manner? So it was rare that a person would have contact with Chef Lemu and lose his temper by the time he is a part, because um, he was always humble. He knew what to say and how to say it. And it was very rare that you would hear something offensive coming from him. At least um, up to now, I have not heard anything offensive coming from his mouth. And I have traveled with him and worked with him on, on many occasions. In June 1976, Sheikh Hamid Lemu, who was drafted into the judiciary against his personal wish and desire as a judge of the Sharia Court of Appeal for Sokoto and Niger states. And the irony, really, I was hoping when the two states were separated to come to Niger and be prominent in Ministry of Education. Then, to my shock, when deployment list came out 
I couldn't see my name anywhere, neither in the Sokoto state list, nor in Niger state list, because I didn't know what was going on. I saw my name missing. That was actually the time when my name had then been processed right up to uh, uh, Supreme Court in Lagos uh, for appointment as uh, a judge of Sharia Court. All the efforts by the then Grand Qadi, Al-Haji Al-Rubinji, Allah to bring me willing, willingly into judiciary, I disliked it. I didn't like it at all. Why? Well, it arose from my father, to be frank with you. My father was in the life where the former district heads and the former emirs, and you know, were more or less the alpha and the omega of everything regarding administration right up to the grassroots. My father was never uh, happy with the way uh, these people, excuse me, were actually handing the common man. Know the way some judges were uh, doing their job. So he warned me when I told him that I got admission to Sharia Law School, Kano, he said, I like the idea of you are getting more knowledge and you comply that you will not do any work, not uh, take appointment. I like that idea, but I don't want you to come back and say you are going to be a judge. That, I didn't forget it. So naturally, complying with the way I was brought up, his warning to me, I didn't like judiciary at all. Uh, just Usman Muhammad is a witness, he's a living witness. He was the one whom they used to send in Northwest tactfully to come and sound my opinion indirectly. I used to tell him, look, I can't judge the case of my own household, let alone judging the case of others. But he will not come out openly to say that, well, we in high court and uh, so and so in Sharia court were thinking of pulling you to judiciary. He never said so. So naturally, when I didn't see my name, in the deployment list of either Sokoto or Niger, I was upset. Then suddenly somebody hinted to me that you are being considered for the post of Sharia court. I was so sad, genuinely sad, that I went to the state, uh, Northwestern state government, please, all my accumulated leave, I want to take it and accompany my wife to the World of Islam Festival in London. That was 1976. They approved. It was in London, Kensington Hilton. I remember one night somebody phoned a friend of mine saying that, oh, Alhaji, I'm very sorry to inform you that you are being appointed Sharia court judge. He knew that I didn't like it. He knew how up there went. And at that time, I wanted to be out of Nigeria. I didn't want to hear any, even the name of Nigeria. So I returned feeling very sad, unhappy, was resolved that as soon as I succeed in establishing Sharia court in Niger, I will, I will retire. So unfortunately, the problem we faced after starting Sharia court in Niger prolonged my stay necessarily for 15 and a half years. The first three years, I had serious problems how to adjust my behavior from somebody who feels he was free, like a bird. I have to mind myself, oh, you are now a judge, internally. How are you free to go to the market, to go and buy what I want by myself, and so forth? He was promoted Grant Cardi, Chief Judge of the Sharia Court of Appeal of Niger State in September 1977. He occupied that position for 14 years until his voluntary retirement in 1991. The Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Idris Kutugi, and a retired Chief Registrar of the Sharia Court of Appeal, Niger State, Alhaji Abdul Kadri Salau, worked closely with Sheikh Lemu 
when he was the chief judge of the Sharia Court of Appeal. When we came to Niger State in 1976, I'm happy to be that um, uh, it was during that time that uh, we, 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 we brought Sheikh from the school to join uh, the judiciary and is a, is a, is a grand cardi, federal grand cardi. So, in fact, we used to sit together. When I was, when I was, later, when I became a judge too, in the same Niger state, we used to sit together and adjudicate cases. They, Syria people, and we, the common law judges, to all interact with the appeals are coming from the area courts. And uh, I can see also here yeah, that uh, is uh, equally a great judge as well until he retired finally. As a judge, he's a very, very strict judge. For his performance as a judge, Sheikh is beyond any person to come and convince him that he should do this for him or should do this for other. Sheikh Ahmed Lemu, as I know him, is never allowed to adjudicate outside Islamic norms. That is the Quran and the Hadith and, uh, and uh, other Islamic figures. He has never agreed to apply common law or uh, earlier court edict or other um, secular laws. Sheikh will never allow himself to apply that law to any case before him. Consequently, if that case comes before him, what he did is just transfer it to high court, that the case is out of jurisdiction. A retired grand caddy in Niger State, al Haji Sadiq Wushishi, was one of the judges who worked with Sheikh Lemo. Very, 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 very good man. Very good man, because I know him, I know him since he was school for Arabic studies canon. Because I was there, I, I studied there. His retirement from the service in December 1991 opened a new chapter in Sheikh Ahmed Lemu's eventful life, that of community service through the Islamic Education Trust, IET, which he, his wife, and late Sani Ashafa Suleiman established as a non-governmental organization in Sokoto in 1969 for effective Islamic propagation and education in Nigeria. IET, which started on a small scale, is now an international organization with headquarters in Mina and centers in Sokoto, Lagos, Adamawa, Kanu, Bochi, and Imo states, as well as Abuja. A major concern of Sheikh Lemu and the organization is spreading the message of Islam to all the nooks and crannies of Nigeria and beyond. To this end, IET has published and printed more than 40 titles on Islam and distributed about 3 million copies of Islamic books in West African countries. The organization also translated some of the books to Hausa, Yoruba, French, Swedish, German, Chinese, and Hudu. The Islamic Education Trust equally trained 250,000 people on Islamic public enlightenment in the rural areas, organized courses for 1,000 Islamic scholars, participated in more than 15 formal interfaith dialogue, produced 400 radio and television programs, held 3,340 tafsir sessions, built and rehabilitated 400 mosques, and recorded 100,000 converts in its 38 years of existence. Alhaji Ibrahim Yahaya is the director of the Dawa Institute of Nigeria, the arm of the Islamic Education Trust, responsible for public enlightenment. Preaching as well as training people in how to convey the message of Islam to the general public 
within and outside the country, as well as uh, conducting research into various topical issues of interest to Islam and Muslims. IET, under the guidance of Sheikh Lemu, has touched the lives of ordinary people through its various welfare schemes. They include the provision of medical assistance to 3,000 poor patients and 832 visits to hospitals, prisons, orphanages, and remand homes to bring succor to the inmates. This is apart from regular assistance to single mothers, widows, the aged, new converts, and physically challenged. al Haji Yusuf Yusuf is the welfare officer of the organization. In fact, under the scholarship of uh, uh, children under IT scholarship, we have presently 66 orphans under this scholarship. These, uh, some of them are in nursery, primary, both private and public schools. And we pay the regular school fees, textbooks, uh, and everything connected to their studies. In collaboration with the International Islamic Charitable Organization in Kuwait, IET has concerned itself with the provision of potable water in several urban and rural communities in Niger State. It has dug 120 wells and distributed 150 water tanks. In an effort to provide high-quality education for Muslims and contribute to the moral upbringing of children as well as youths, the Islamic Education Trust Fund, founded by Sheikh Hamid Lemo, established nursery primary and secondary schools in Mena, Abuja, and Sokoto. There are currently 1,600 pupils and students in these institutions. IET is also involved in higher education through the award of 700 scholarships to Nigerian undergraduates in conjunction with the Islamic Development Bank Scholarship Scheme. 109 other Africans have been sponsored in Nigerian universities, while 560 scholarships have been given to orphans, physically challenged, and refugee students in post-primary institutions across the country. Nuruddin Lemu is a member of the Senior Management Advisory Board of the IET. We call it the High Level Manpower Development Program because what it does is to identify individuals who have been very helpful to the community and who are interested in furthering their studies. And so there's the fund where we try to uh, do some fundraising for that fund and help support these people through their postgraduate studies. So it may be postgraduate diplomas, it may be master's degrees, it may be PhDs. We have so far been able to assist over 170 students. Apart from his involvement in the Islamic Education Trust, Sheikh Hamid Lemu has participated in several committees constituted by the federal government. They include Presidential Interreligious Committee on Nigeria's Membership of the Organization of Islamic Conference, OIC, Vision 2010, Nigerian Interreligious Council, Presidential Advisory Council on Youth Development, and Presidential Panel on National Security. Ultimately, ultimately, not initially, like them because nearly in all of them I will go and meet people with whom I share the same feeling for Nigeria. You will find nowadays that many people are not so much, they are not patriots. They are not thinking of Nigeria, welfare of Nigeria, development of Nigeria, not so much like that. They put that as a kind of advertisement for themselves. Majority, majority, majority are after their pockets, are after power. 
But in terms of when I were, invo was involved in these matters, I, find, I found a number of Nigerians who shared my aspiration for the country. So we were able to work and to advise the government effectively on what is good and what is not, and how they will do things and how they shouldn't do it. In all the things you see, that's my happiness. And we are able to share and uh, express our views candidly, not hypocritically. But naturally, you end up feeling sorry for the country. There was no continuity of policies. One regime will come, even if it appreciates what the other regime had been advised and so forth, because it is in the name of that regime, they, they put it aside. Even if they would steal an idea from it, they tried to coin it with something and uh, different name and went about it selfishly. So that's the thing that makes me always feel sad. Otherwise, anything to make Nigeria great, we have already got, got, got it in, in the files, in the cabinets and whatnot and so forth. Here, useful not only for the people for whom we work, but even for the present regime and for even future regimes. Sheikh Hamed Lemu is also a member of many Islamic and Dawa organizations, which include International Council for Islamic Information, Markfield, United Kingdom, Nigerian Counterpart Organization for Islamic Development Bank Scholarship Program, Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, International Islamic Charitable Organization, Kuwait, and Constituent Assembly of Muslim World League, Mecca, Saudi Arabia. For his meritorious services to humanity, Sheikh Hamed Lemu has won national and international awards, which include First Niger State Merit Award in 1991, Nigerian National Honor of Officer of the Order of the Niger, 1999, Nigerian National Honor of Officer of the Order of the Federal Republic, 2001, Ambassador for Peace Award by Interreligious and International Federation for World Peace, 2002, and Federation of Muslim Women Associations, Form 1, Niger States Award of Abu Imad, April 2007. I want to thank my Lord, Allah, who, through my parents, because that's where I began, really, to mold my life. You know, and fortunately has endowed me with the wisdom not only to see the truth of what my parents were aspiring for in their training, bringing me, and to thank my teachers, whom I was lucky to go to the right schools at the right time, and I saw the, the fruit of it. So I now feel that the best way to behave is as summarized in the Quran, saying that man is bound to lose himself, except those who have faith in God and his messenger and behave righteously and exercise patience in adversity, perseverance in doing good, self-restraint from evil, and contentment with minimum need of life and the ability to see the result of complying with divine code of conduct or defiance of divine code of conduct. Now, that is summarized in a ch one chapter in the Quran 